Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. One of the more interesting tools we've been covering when it comes to AI image editors are these drag-based tools that use point selection and perspective shift to give you a really interesting way of evolving and editing images. The first one of these we covered was the initial release of Dragan, which per its name, you can edit images with AI by dragging and GAN, the key there is it's based on GANs. And GANs are fundamentally different structurally when compared to diffusion models like stable diffusion. However, it's been wild to see how quickly these have evolved. Just a few weeks ago, we got the first real code implementation in the wild of Dragon. You can run it locally. And today I found something that's actually really, really interesting that still has to do with Dragan. And it's a paper that presents a new approach entirely to the drag or sort of point-based image editing that was initially demonstrated by Dragan, but it's diffusion-based. Unsurprisingly, the paper is actually named Dragon Diffusion Enabling Drag Style Manipulation on Diffusion Models. And to be clear, uh, this is not using GANs, this is using diffusion-based models. And we'll get into a bit of what that means in just a bit. So first off, what's really impressive about this is that it only took about a month and a half to actually end up with this implementation from the first suggestion that the kind of dragging interface was even that interesting. And what's surprising to me is, you know, some people will say that these are really intuitive to use and I kind of disagree. I have seen some people really pick it up who have read the paper and understand why it works. But when I give this to people who maybe have used Photoshop or use something even more simple than Photoshop, they're really not that great at using it. And it's kind of a weird tool to initially start using to understand what's actually happening when you're picking a starting point and an end point and then running the Dragon process and then seeing a result. I think another factor of this is that Dragon is actually pretty hard to run in platforms like Replicate because the form of input and output is iterative and the kind of input you have to give it is actually pretty complex. So outside of the few very limited hugging face implementations, it's really hard to host in a general available way. So GANs operate in a relatively iterative fashion and they're to an extent self-reinforcing, which is why they can produce incredible results with seemingly um, single shot accuracy. For those of you who have looked at NERFs or understand sort of the rough pho photogrammetry approach to how diffusion models try to take 2D images and turn them into 3D images or interpolate what another angle of a two-dimensional image might be, at a very rough level, that's what's going on here with Dragon Diffusion. And their abstract is a pretty good way of explaining this. So, so basically the way they launched this paper is despite the ability of existing large scale text to image models to generate high quality images from detailed textual descriptions, they often lack the ability to precisely edit the generated or real images. And what's interesting is this is kind of a critique of image to image and in painting. I, mean, I would say this works pretty well, but compared to zero shot GANs, there is kind of a difference. So they say, in this paper, we propose a novel image editing method, drag and diffusion, enabling drag style manipulation. So that's more so the interface and what you're actually presenting the model on diffusion model. Specifically, we construct classifier guidance based on the strong correspondence of intermediate features in the diffusion model. It can transform the editing signals into gradients, by a feature correspondence loss to modify the intermediate representation of the diffusion model. Basically what they're saying here is this model can do a better job since it's diffusion based of one, understanding what it's given. So clip is what does this predominantly and then understanding what you want from it when compared to Dragan, which is a little bit more simple in terms of what it's doing. And this is why Dragon is kind of picky with the kind of images you give it and the, how good the results actually are after the fact. Diffusion models are a bit more adaptable here and they're much better able to understand um, features or basically attributes of what it's actually looking at to then understand what you might want. The really interesting thing with this is it actually opens up the ability to actually prompt as well as drag, which is sort of funny because there were some other people who I guess don't really have too much of a CS background who are actually explaining Dragon as a model you could prompt against, which ironically now you can do with this in theory. Uh, based on this guidance strategy, we also build a multi-scale guidance to consider both semantic and geometric alignment. So what this basically means is the model is able to compare what you're providing as a prompt or what it thinks it's getting out from clip that you've provided relative to what it thinks the actual shape, subject or object in the image and the resultant of you doing stuff with Dragon Diffusion actually is. Uh, so geometric alignment means how similar is this to a shape I've seen before or some kind of object I've seen before from some angle. Moreover, a cross branch of self-attention is added to maintain consistency between the original image and the ending result. 
this is basically a form of um, iterative awareness or uh, the ability for the model to look at its own output and understand what it is relative to the input. Our method through an efficient design achieves various editing modes for the generated or real images, such as an object moving, object resizing, object appearance replacement, and content dragging. And by that, they pretty much mean stretching or resizing. It is worth noting that all editing and content preservation signals come from the image itself, and the model does not require fine tuning or additional modules. And what's also cool is they've provided the source code right here. So this is broken down by moving, moving and resizing, uh, actually taking an image, basically cropping it and placing it in a new, uh, completely synthetic scene. We have replacing, okay, replacing the ice cream. So contextual replacement, that's what I call that. And then we have the more conventional features of Dragan, which were resizing features um, like mouths or uh, grills, like in this car and changing perspective of faces. So like this lion here. Here's some other examples of moving and resizing and I guess continued moving or moving with even a, a wider context and moving with even a greater degree of separation from whatever it was initially moved from. If you've used drag and before, you know, that's something it actually struggles with. A lot of pastries and donuts, that's kind of interesting. And you can go from a sandwich to a croissant. Okay, and uh, you know, it wouldn't be an AI paper in 2023 if there wasn't sort of a cheeky reference or Easter egg of Minecraft, which is kind of interesting. So that's kind of cool because it's very contextually aware. And again, with repetitive textures, that was something that Dragan had difficulties with, mostly because when you have repeating textures, it's harder for these models to understand what's changed or what actually is different from the input, which as the abstract mentioned is actually pretty important with these. So that's what they have to show here. And what's also interesting is this actually isn't the first paper to try this. So there was actually a system released about a week ago. Now this is different. Um, this is called drag diffusion. So not drag on diffusion. And what's cool is this is actually fully available. Um, I'm pretty sure a dragon diffusion is provided as pseudocode. So similar to um, the AI Minecraft agents, basically that means it, it's code that's not really in any one language. It's just generalized so that if you want to go through the process of implementing it, you can do it. It's really common with academic papers. However, uh, drag diffusion actually has an active Python implementation now, which is kind of cool. And they provide sort of a different approach here because they're actually using um, Allura, which is kind of a curious approach. Basically, you're, you're starting with noise, doing in recurrences of latent optimization. They show also nicely here, it's sort of this process of reconstruction loss. And what's cool is we're now actually seeing enough interest in these sort of drag based editors that there is competition doing the same novel things. And this is from uh, Zhai Zhang. And I will link all of this in the description below. So yeah, uh, I'll maybe have a demo for these if there's enough interest. I think it's really cool that uh, this really quirky form of image editing has really caught a lot of both academic attention and based on what YouTube tells me you guys are searching for. Um, I get a lot of searches for that as well. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, I hope you learned something.